Welcome to my talk on CPPCon. First, a couple of words about me. My name is Arnold Lepisk. I work as a software engineering consultant at HiQ. And I've been working with C++ and, and I've been working with, um, as, as a consultant for one eighth of a century. That's 12 and a half years. And I like to talk about C++. And what, why I'm here today talking to you is because I was a presenter this year at CppCon in, yeah, at CppCon. This is a talk about talking, so there's going to be a lot of meta. Uh, but first, some <coughs> background about talking. Say that you want to hold a talk. Uh, and this, in this context, when I say talking, I mean technical talks, not like sales talks or stuff like that. The first question to ask yourself, if you want to hold a talk, what are you going to talk about? Uh, often it's something you've worked with, or it can also be something that you're interested in. Having a talk is a very good opportunity to learn, your, learn something that you then talk about to others. But it can be yeah, tech, techniques or also lessons learned from projects. It's, it's often not, not very fun when your own projects go to, to disastrous, but it can be very good for others to hear about them. So think about that. And, and, but the important thing is whatever you talk about that it interests you, because that makes a much better talk. Uh, if you want to find a subject, read blogs, listen to podcasts, or just talk to people. A very good way of finding some, something to talk about is say, talking to your colleagues, say, I'm thinking about talking about this or that. Do you think that would be interesting? Try that. And also, you don't need to be a super expert to talk, because it's very hard to have a talk that pleases everyone, from beginner to expert. There's also a market for talks for people who aren't very experienced. And it's also very, often very important to hear the input from people, for, for us who are more like experts, we, we, miss, uh, we miss the perspective from a beginner. We, might think we remember how it was beginning programming C++. But for once, we don't remember. And for the second part, learning C++ today is a completely different business than learning C++ for 10, year, for 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah, and I think that everyone, or at least almost everyone have something to tell that might interest someone else. And where to talk, one, when, where, one very common place to talk is at your workplace, if you have one, for transferring knowledge to other colleagues or introducing new colleagues or anything like that. Or you can hold courses. M many, many places have courses for their own employees. And the thing that I'm going to focus on, on conferences and meetups. The general idea of talking at a conference or meetup is more or less the same. It's more bureaucracy around talking at a conference. Okay, back to my story. As most internet do-it-yourself things, I start with a finished picture. This is what we're aiming for. I'm going to start with a few words about CppCon. How many of you have heard of CppCon? I'd say that's more or less everyone, at least. Uh, this, yeah. Um, it's a very large C++ conference. It started 2014. Uh, it's, I think, uh, all times so far, five times, have been in September. I think one year spilled over one day into October or something. And it's 
always been in Bellevue. And Bellevue, everyone knows Bellevue, Washington is? No, it's just outside Seattle. Very interesting nature, coming from, you, in my, my mind, for the first time I went there, I think, yeah, Seattle is by the sea. And then you fly in and you see between Seattle and the sea, there are over 2,000 meter high mountains. And if you turn your head the other way around, you see a, a, a Mount Rainier. I think it's almost four and a half kilometers high. So it's a very nice view if, if you're in Bellevue or in Seattle and look, uh, you can see the high, high mountain. I like mountains. Uh, yeah, that, but the conference itself is five days plus two days before and two days after with classes. Uh, I took a class this year because they had uh, some kind of, they had a rather good discount for speakers or for first time speakers as well for a course called engage entertain and educate technical speaking that works with so some names that you might recognize it was given by andre andre uh, alexandrescu kate gregory and scott myers and much of the and they gave much, very much tips for a speaker. So if you ever get a chance to take that, that class or any other class at a conference, take it. It's very... Uh, um, yeah, five days. There's one keynote every day. The keynote is, is a larger presentation. Uh, there were... Bjorn Sorsrup and Herb Sutter, I think they've given keynotes at every CPCon so far. Other, the other three were um, Kate Gregory, Chandler Carruth, and um, Mark Elhent, Elhent who, is, who um, came to fame because at the Oscars last year, he thanked the C++ committee in his thank you speech because they made a big... Um, software for visual effects in uh, made in very many movies and I found that very interesting because most speeches or talks at the conference are very technical this was more like an application that they showed how to how it, how C++ is actually used if you go one step above the all the template meta programming so should you go? There's not some error on my slide. Of course you should. But you can't. At least not in Bellevue, because this was the last year the conference was held in Bellevue. Next year it's in Aurora in Colorado, outside Denver. That's there. OK, <coughs> back to my story. Uh, my first visit to CPPCon was 2014, the first year, and I've been there for a total of four times. The second time I went, uh, I held a light lightning talk because they have a, uh, besides the main talks, they have sessions, I think it was three sessions uh, at night time when, where you don't have to go through the, all the usual work of applying to get a talking spot. You just send a mail, I'd like to hold a lightning talk, and if there's time you get five minutes to talk. I talked about singletons in C++. Uh, it was fun, and when I went home, I immediately started thinking, could I hold a real talk next year? So, in April last year at Sweden's this uh, meetup, I held a talk about um, safe types, or rather, on using the C++ type system to get dimensions correct when you do physics calculations. Because that's something that interests me for a rather long time. You, because the interest spurred from a long time ago, pre-C++11. 
I heard someone mentioning that this should be a, should be possible to do, but I never actually saw someone do it. So I sat down and <coughs> coded it and made a presentation. That went rather well, I think. So I thought, yeah, I could modify this and send it in to, uh, to CppCon for a real talk. So I did. And I got this response. Some kind of, sometimes you get rejected. OK. This is the key point. Rig. So come this year, this spring, I put a little more work in it. I asked colleagues, I asked friends to read through my submission and got, got a little bit, little bit tips. And also they have a, they have, a, the conference itself has some volunteers. Uh, you can send in your proposal and you get tips on, yeah, if, is this interesting at all? Write it this way, write it that way. And it worked out. So then the fun time, fun stuff began. Researching, because when you send in a proposal, often you don't have the talk ready, because why put all the work into it without knowing if you have, you, you have an outline, you have an abstract, that's about it. And yeah, most important, you have an idea of what to talk about. Then writing and practicing. What I found out about myself is it, I find it much, much more fun to do research on the talk than to actually write the talk. <laughs> that's see surely yeah, sure, surely. <laughs> I think everyone else just sits down and writes a talk, like one hour talk, it takes one hour to write, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and practicing. Uh, it's important to practice this stuff. Uh, I haven't practiced this so, so much as I had wished to because of reasons. Uh, and I did a run through at my workplace. It read, read well. Uh, I know that Harald offered me to come here and uh, do it, but it was, there wasn't enough time. The, the timing didn't work out. Uh, so, so day of the talk, I had an early morning slot or early programmer early at nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, didn't really got as much audience as I had wished for. But as I said, it's, there are very many talks, very much, uh, very much uh, competition of, of over people, and probably nine o'clock, some people are still at their home, at their hotels, sleeping. But it went rather well, although a bit short, because when I practiced my talk, it took like forty-seven minutes. When I and then I thought, yeah, that's a little short. I, I'll add some slides. When I did it for real, it took 42 minutes. So I haven't, it, the video is not available online. I haven't watched it myself, so I don't really know what I skipped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. So this is the fi finished result. And you can watch it. I think we put a link up to this somewhere, so you can watch it if you want. And the future, yeah. Um, yeah, question? The audience here, how many have seen the yeah. I see five, six hands. I hope I get more views. The view, the view count <laughs> going up after this it's tonight. Well worth watching. <laughs> yeah, and the future. I, already on the plane home, I started thinking about what to talk about next. Um, I have a couple of ideas, but nothing I really can. I want to talk about it, but stay tuned. Hopefully I can be out a little bit more time so we can at least do a talk here. Okay, now say you want to do a CppCon talk. Uh, this is how I experienced it. 
I might have missed some steps that actually happen behind the scenes and so. Uh, and this is for CppCon. I think the process is more or less the same for any conference you, you want to go to. This is the short version. Think of a subject. Write it down and submit it. Uh, and yeah, number three, the easy part, get accepted. And then you write a talk, then you go to CPCon and you hold a talk. Yeah. How do you submit? What do you submit? Yeah, yeah, I'm coming to that. I don't think I have pictures of it, but I'm, I'm going to talk about that a bit. But um, this is what's the timeline at least. The, the announcement of the opening up for submission was in late March. I don't actually know. This is the dates they put on their home page. I don't know if that if the call submissions might have been a little bit later actually. The deadline was 11th of May and they say that like 80% of all submissions come 20 minutes after the deadline. Uh, and in the beginning of July you got the acceptance uh, or Re rejection notice and a couple of weeks later because after you get accepted you have time to tweak your abstract or so before the official program goes out yeah now the submission what, what do you have to submit you have to submit information about yourself uh, name and company like biograph biographical information uh, and the most important type things about the talk are the talk title, ab an abstract. This abstract is like how you actually sell your talk. And this I found rather hard because you got like three paragraphs to sell a talk you haven't written yet. So, and you also need to submit an outline. I don't know if you have to submit it, but it sure helps an outline and it, of, of your talk, what you're going to talk about that isn't published, that's just for the people deciding which talks to take in. And I found it very good to have that outline written when I then started writing the talk because it was a couple of months later and I said, yeah, yeah good, I, I actually thought about something. Then I tweaked it, of course, but yeah. And they also accept talks that have been given before, but then they want you to tell them where and wh when you have given the talks before. And also if you have video of you talking, uh, this talk or something else, so you can, can get a picture of how you are on scene. Was that an answer to your question? Good. And that's it. They have an email set up where you can get like pre, not pre-approval, no, no uh, like help for some, for, for your talk. I used it, I got some tips and not being an English speaker, uh, a native English speaker, uh, I got also got some help with some grammatical errors and such. So that's good. And if you use it, use it in time, don't use it don't mail them the night before the submission deadline and accept to get an answer, but three or four weeks before. The earlier the better. Yeah. And to, it's uh, important to know that abstract and title are available for everyone if you get accepted. And it, you need to sell your talk. You may have to build interest in a title plus three or two or three paragraphs and as I said you have to sell something that doesn't really exist that's also why you can adapt the uh, adapt the abstract okay but now you sent it in and then the pro the program committee takes over and the program committee I think they take volunteers in and they read all, read through all the abstracts and give you grades uh, and comments on, on your talk. I think I had eight people giving me comments and grades. 
and uh, grades is some go from not interesting at all to uh, yeah great we need this and as far as I know uh, understand it the grades are just an indication for what they actually choose so even if you get very high grades you it's not a guarantee that you get accepted on the other way around low grades can get accepted because probably they need to find a balance between different kind of talks even if you have like 10 talks on the same subject that are very good they have to shoot they don't want 10 talks discussing the exact same thing of course and then you get the decisions and hopefully you get accepted and when that's done you do the actual actual work writing practicing and holding the talk Just a, a couple of final things before, before I finish. If you do a presentation, wherever <coughs> you do it, I have a wish list for your slides. Don't put too much information on one slide. <coughs> second, second, if you show code, don't point at the screen because we do here we do a screen recording that doesn't show up and it doesn't probably show up on the camera itself but highlight the things that you want to people to look at and have line numbers it's much easier to reference on on line three you see that on line one we define a method and please when you're ending a talk, have a good ending. Don't just ru run out of slides. I've seen too many talks that just say, whoops, that was my last slide. I don't know what happens now yet. So, call to action. I want every one of you to go home and think of a talk you can hold. Because everyone here has something to tell. And why do I want people to hold talks? Well, we need to spread knowledge amongst all, all of us. And because it's a win-win situation, when, when people hear, hear about what you, say, you have to say, it gets more interesting, and we build if we get spread good techniques amongst people and also spread things that yeah I, we tried this this doesn't didn't work we save a lot of time and ultimately we can get to build better software and that's what it's all right about and finally have fun thank you Any questions? Yeah? How detailed the, the reason talk shall be? Do they intend, do they expect every board that you intend to tell the reason in the talk that you send? The question is how, how, how detailed, detailed the, yes. uh, the abstract, uh, uh, the, the outline. Final. Final. I actually don't know how detailed it needs to be, but it needs to like point out the things that you're going to talk about. I don't think it's an actual um, requirement, but it's for the people who are reading and deciding to know, to decide if it's, if it's, is, if your talk is interesting or not. Yeah. Do you have any tips for how you convince your employer to pay for a trip? To <laughs> 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 Tip, tips for how to, for, to get your employer to pay. Not really. Have a good boss. I have a very good boss. Uh, who, um, but on most, in most places you have like um, you have what we call um, um, vidareutbildning at at the workplace. So 
if you can convince your your yeah whoever holds that bag of money to say yeah I I want to do this and it's because it's a very good conference and you learn a lot and if you can do stuff like hold uh, tell your colleagues about what you've learned when you come back I think that's that's a good way of selling it. Yeah, the, yeah, 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 the the comment was that there might be some scholarships. Yeah, I know that if you if you're holding a talk, you can get uh, a financial aid if you need from the conference, and also a volunteer program that uh, you can get something. I I haven't checked that out that much, but yeah. <coughs> yeah, just to add to <coughs> to the same. Um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, Different conferences uh, have a different idea of how ideas of how to sponsor speakers, but every single one of them does some kind of sponsoring. The, the, the most generous ones pays for absolutely everything, except they, they don't give you a salary, but, but they, they cover all costs. Uh, they, uh, I have not seen a single one that doesn't at least pay the conference fee for you. So it, it varies, but, but you, you get compensated for it adding to the conference. You mentioned the length of the abstracted three paragraphs, I think. Isn't that, isn't it usually one paragraph? Uh, the, the instructions on their homepage says one to three paragraphs. Uh, one to three, yeah. okay. Yep. Uh, I didn't see the end of your presentation. Did you get audience questions at the end? And do you have any advice on how to uh, yeah. Handle yeah, well. I think I got. Yeah, the the question was about questions. Did I get questions? Uh, <laughs> I, d I think I did get one mic'd question. Uh, one peop one person who asked um, a question on microphone, and then yeah, but but then people came after we the camera had stopped and talked to me uh, like. Uh, there's always at these conferences uh, like a gathering around the speaker after the actual speaker's been done. So, yeah. But questions, yeah. Um, there are different techniques of taking questions. Most, peop most speakers take them as they go, as they come. Then there are speakers who, all, who refer questions to the end. It's up to you. Uh, I personally think it's better for questions as they come with but you also have to be ready to say yeah that question is answered in a couple of slides uh, yeah speakers dinner is that included question about speakers dinner yes it was a speakers dinner included uh, i don't think there has been one every year but uh, this uh, or the first but yeah, there was a speaker's dinner, and uh, if, if you weren't a speaker, you could buy tickets for it. But it was included for speakers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.